I'm Gene Grant here at the table with this week's Line Opinion panelists. Recent winter storms are having an effect on some industries here in New Mexico. It's now estimated that over 30,000 dairy cows in New Mexico and West Texas, they died in that storm in late December. And the storm reportedly disrupted oil and gas production. And Dan, this could be a big hit on our economy that's already struggling on multiple levels. But, you know, losing livestock, I mean, I, I read, I'm not a dairy expert, certainly, but I, I, I read a quote from a, from a, a dairy uh, grower that said, you know, even if the, some of the cattle survive, it may not, they may not produce. Yeah, no, it's... That's it's, an amazing thing to so me. So, you know, p part of the whole thing with the dairies, had a yeah. ton of them in my district, is dairy cows are, they're very temperamental. I mean, keep in, keep in, keep in mind <laughs> well, that, that you're keeping them, that. Yeah. you're keeping them through hormones. Their body believes right. they're pregnant eight, nine months That's out right. of the year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you got these massive changes in weather, you got massive changes in moisture. It really affects the ability for milk production. Right. <laughs> are you saying, are you He's that? right. No, I've heard no, this. I've heard this. Dan is now an expert on bovines. <laughs> no, I'm just telling you, this is good stuff. I'm Pregnant just bovines. Saying, I mean, this is just amazing. You know, this is. You know, right. I don't have to put up with this treat. <laughs> it sounds like where we're heading with this, Dan, is unpredictable changes in global and local climate have a negative impact on our business. On, on the lives mm. of people here I think in New that's Mexico. What we were using is that, to, is to that right? To is that right? To pay attention to uh, climate change just a few years ago. I would, I would say that. It's finally that, coming I would home say, to roost. I would say that mm -hmm. that's there's nobody that would argue that. Okay. The argument is. is I think that, many people do. Argue oh no, that. I don't think many people argue. I think many people argue that this is a constant thing that's happening when we talk about a hundred year storm, two hundred year storm. The one thing I will say about this whole storm. You, you down there, this is something we need to anticipate. For, thank you for for the transition. This is. I'm going to go to Laura now. Wow. This is something we need to to to, to discuss. It wasn't just a, a freak storm. You know, remember the storm, was it two winters ago? We, we had uh, in the north a lot of... 2011. 2011, right. Yeah. Horrible storm. Are we ready for these kind of things? That's the fundamental question because it costs New Mexicans money right out of their pocket for a long period of time. It does, and I think this, you know, I, I'm glad that that was brought up because I, I think yeah. that that, you know, having done a lot of policy work on climate change, those were the kinds of arguments we were using to try to get people to understand right. that this was something that was going to impact areas like, you know, Dan's former district um, and, and all these areas that have significant agricultural mm -hmm. interests and mm -hmm. oil and gas interests. And these are the storms that are happening. Yes, they're the 100-year storms, but they're happening with more frequency now. We just had the last one in 2011. Right that I can remember where we had huge devastation and you know gas pipes breaking and whatever right. people having serious problems. Mm -hmm. So I think you know in this situation we have you know there's tremendous insurance costs that are going to go up. Mm -hmm. uh, the federal government's going to have to you know there's being a, a state of emergency there's going to be potential federal government monies right. um, to help with some of that mm -hmm. but ultimately the impact of it we're going to see for many years in the industry mm -hmm. and that's very um, devastating for a lot of these communities mm -hmm. and these should, business owners. I, I think it'd be interesting to get down to Roswell and talk to them about the impacts of global warming right now they're still under two and a half feet of snow in a place that hasn't seen snow in well, that, that's years. part of it but but that's I will let me, let me just say this though let me let me just let me let me just let me just say this though that that I will say this that the the good news out of all of this is that now the reports coming out that the drought is almost gone. I mean that the I lakes are that. full, yeah. the rivers are full, and that's been a huge area of concern. For However, our good friend and colleague Laura Pascas <coughs> just had an article this week mm -hmm. where there's some indication that potentially the Rio Grande could be in a permanent drought situation uh, as it stands. And so to Laura's point, Tom Garrity, you know, are, are, we, are we ready here to deal with the vagaries of weather results? Because I can tell you in the Northeast, of course, they're planning like crazy after last winter's shenanigans. They realize they need to do something completely different to remove snow. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost people more. What do we need to do here? Yeah, yeah well, you know, with uh, the mm -hmm. biggest issues I think that impact New Mexico when it comes to these winter storms are Interstate 40 and Interstate 25. That was a mess. Um, and, yep. you know, whenever, so, you know, maybe a plan of how do you work on clearing those construction zones, right. um, you know, between Albuquerque and, this, and the border. Mm -hmm. uh, to basically get them, you know, cleared out, so you don't have that huge backlog, mm -hmm. uh, which stuff. is costing somebody money. And, That's and economic it, impact. It is, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, well, even getting the rest stops the up and going too. Here in <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, the, right. I'm sure the occupancy rates, uh, corners, you know, east central are just through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> and so, happens in Raton, but, yeah. um, mm -hmm. Well, it, it's interesting on a policy. These are hard to get our arms around because what do you do? Do you say, well? Just in case, let's allocate a, a couple million dollars for new trucks and new this and new that. It's not, but nobody's inclined once sure, the storm's I'm not sure over. We get you know? to the policy questions mm -hmm. until um, we get over the emotional issue of of um, policymakers who have really 
campaigned on the idea that this isn't going to happen, that we can continue to do things that harm our earth because that for short-term business mm -hmm. gain, short-term constituent gain, mm -hmm. not recognizing um, over the long term that that is going to have negative impacts. Well, this is more and, and of I a think shift of El Nino not seeing, as opposed well, to We're not seeing change. that change mm -hmm. in um, the, the discourse from our politicians, and until they can move off of those positions that are so entrenched, it will be very difficult mm -hmm. to, to see new policies come into effect that will help. Can we lead on this, Laura sanchez Rave? I mean, you know, California's having mudslides as we yeah. tape this mm -hmm. literally because, well, you know, weather you know, and... And they've never had mudslides. I'm not right? sure. I so I, I disagree a little bit with what um, with what's being said because mm -hmm. I, I think that um, there is an opportunity to, I think, find some common ground in terms of mitigation steps and preparedness. Mm -hmm. And I think that the discussion, even at the, you know, at the 30,000 foot level, you have fundamental, you know, people who have fundamental um, differences in what they believe causes all of this. Right. But they don't disagree in the fact that it's happening. The effect. And that the right. effect of it. And you the cost. You can't drive in Roswell for eight days. Right. Whether you're a, whether and you the, believe in global warming or not, you can't get around. The cost is you. huge. And That's I think right. in, insurance industries, you know, the insurance industry understands this is a huge cost and something that needs to be um, handled proactively and mm -hmm. preemptively. Mm -hmm. So I think that that discussion can take place regardless of what your, um, you know, what your orientation is as far as the cause of it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that we haven't had as much of a discussion of here in New Mexico mm -hmm. and something that we should be um, planning for. Mm -hmm. You know, before you go, Gene, one of the Please. things that every, you know, this happened a couple times when I was in the legislature and what we got to figure out how to address correctly and make sure it doesn't happen this legislative session. We had this happen one of my first years in the legislature in northern New Mexico. The answer was, you know, we went out and bought all these snow plows and all right. these trucks and all right. this stuff. And for years they sat there. That's and right. by the time we got ready to use, they couldn't use. You know, do you run down now and does Roswell, does the city of Roswell say, hey, we've decided we need 15 snow plows in our arsenal mm -hmm. that are going to sit there for the next 70 years until they can all be just, you know, used mm -hmm. again. I, I think it's interesting, though, that there's got to be a better coordination, like we've all talked about and talked about earlier. This didn't sneak up on us. We didn't wake up one day and go, oh my God, there's three feet of snow in Roswell. We knew it was coming, was coming and yet the, the ability to deploy resources on the freeway, to get with other states, mm -hmm. to go to states like Arizona and say, you're not experiencing this in Phoenix. Can you send trucks? That's can right. you send stuff right. so that we can keep major arteries right. open? we got to get better at figuring this stuff out. Good stuff there. That's all the time we have. Thanks for joining us. I'm Gene Grant. Go online to hear what this week's panelists had to say about new work requirements for some people who are using food assistance in New Mexico. And thanks for joining us this week for New Mexico in Focus. And as always, we appreciate your time and effort to stay informed and engaged. And we'll see you next week in Focus. Get a preview of what's coming up on the next New Mexico in Focus. It's easy. Sign up for our weekly email at NewMexicoInFocus.org.